All right, Jake. It's been a while since we had one of these, and it's been a wild week. Oh yeah, it's been soap and peeper week. Yee. <laughs> the world has been awry. Yeah, Nothing, and, uh, yeah, but we're still here. We're still talking. We're still live. Yes, and not censored yet. Not, not just censored yet. yet. No. Hell well, free internet. <laughs> yeah, we won this one. Um, as many have been uh, comparing this to the internet wars. Uh, especially our little Texan friend uh, Alex Jones has been uh, calling this the the beginning of World War Three, and the the world war is now online and whatnot. It's just this is not as much of of course comparing it with the war is it's not entirely wrong, but it's it's just such an exaggeration because. The, Wars are by nature destructive and have a very clear agenda of, of, of winning and you can't really say what is a victory in in this type of battle really. I think I see what you mean. It's, 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 it's more complicated than, than clear winners and losers and, and who are the combatants and, and where are the big battles and, and how are they conducted. It's, it's so much about legal issues and about uh, consolidation of powers and about influence and, of course, uh, the money and the profits of everything. So Some people I know would argue that that's what war is about as well. I mean, there's bureaucracies that set them off, and when enough people have died, they turn them off. Yeah, and, and, and then there's a danger of uh, getting into the the broken window fallacies and, and talking about Keynesian economics and destructive economics and trickle-down economics and, and, and all this. And it's, it's such a huge agenda. Um, but when it boils down to, to the essence, this is all about um, personal rights and about how to differentiate between fair use and unfair use. Um, and, and this is the whole problem that because we don't discuss and differentiate between um, what is um, the intent of the user or the copyright breaker or breacher, it, then the whole debate just becomes moot and stupid and trench war-like. Mm -hmm. right? Because if you look at the, 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 the themes uh, around the whole uh, uh, mega download um, issue, right? where you have these very questionable characters that uh, I think when uh, when they did the bust uh, they found eight million dollars in cash <laughs> uh -huh. that should start some warning lights right already right there right someone that's got eight million in cash lying around they're not really on the good side of uh, the legal system right um so so this all comes down to what type of people and and copyright infringers is actually the problem and is this really a war against the people or is it just because these old school people that really have no idea where the development is 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 taking them is just shooting at everything Right, they're just uh, blanket bombing the world just because they know that there's an enemy somewhere. There must so be. everyone else is just casualties of the war, right? It's just civilian casualties. Hmm. So, so, so I mean, but let's go with that for a minute. You're saying that, um, I mean, it isn't part of a specific agenda and planned years in advance. That, oh my God, the internet is going to be unpredictability machine number one. We must shut that down. Uh, it's what, an act of desperation amongst a series of acts of desperations. It's it's so many people um, coming together with different agendas, right? It, it, I, I I compare this to um, the invention of the printing press. Um, back then, the the, the main uh, interest in shutting it down was, of course, the church and their monopoly in uh, creating uh, handwritten Bibles and, and things like that. And, and, and of course, also to some extent, maybe some of the legal systems and uh, anyone that 
was interested in, in retaining control with uh, the sharing and the dissemination of information. So back then it might have been three or four players on the scene, right? But now, in, in, in this era, with the internet, it's everyone has some sort of vested interest in it. But they might be able to agree on some points, and then it becomes sort of like the 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 reverse di- di- dilutive de- de- democracy. Instead of uh, instead instead of uh, voting on whether we are to drink uh, tea or coffee, and then uh, we both just drink hot hot water because we uh, <laughs> we take things away. This is just additive. So it's. Instead, we are mixing coffee and tea and asking everyone to drink that. And I don't think anyone would really like to drink that. You totally lost me on that metaphor. Well, <laughs> I, I get the artificial scarcity, and, uh, and yeah, my coffee hasn't tasted the same for years. Um, no, if we are at a meeting and we have to uh, vote whether or not, uh, whether we want to drink coffee or tea at the meeting, and we are doing a deselective voting, which means that uh, in case we want some sort of uh, agreement and, and, and meet uh, in the middle, then the middle would become deselective and then we just drink the hot water because that's what both have in common. But we don't get any coffee in it and we don't get any tea in it, mm-hmm. right? So no one is really uh, revulsed by that. But if instead everyone gets their say and we just mix everything in the bowl and then everyone needs to drink that that's not going to taste very well no one is going to like the drink right exactly so the internet is becoming a place where you go to create your own internet or rather your group's own internet the interface you need the, that you want this is about the legislation created a, a, around copyright and rights of use and and the behavior uh, online, everyone uh, seems to want to have some sort of influence and, and put something into that legislation. Then it becomes a uh, the, the term Napoleonic law where everything is illegal un- unless you are given or granted specific rights to do it. And, and, and that's not a situation that, that human beings can exist in because it's a totally uh, destructive uh, Legal system. I would attend to agree, but but it, but it has the. I mean, if you look at the internet as uh, say the virtual world and the virtual shadow of the real world, which is growing ever more complex, both the shadow and the real world, and and whatever you, however you try to define the internet, I guess uh, the all of us using it understand this to be something different or unique to ourselves. But. That legislation, had it been passed, would create then the situation, according to what you're saying online, that we have in the real world. Because we do live in a clusterfuck of legislation uh, that none of us can even begin to comprehend. We just know that inevitably we must break rules by living. And and that's the point, right? Because there's been so many uh, legislations passed already around the issues of digital rights and copyrights and patents and all this. So uh, everyone is, is used to living in a world where, let's say, 20% of the whole population in the Western world are in some way breaking some legal system somewhere, right? Whether you have a copied bag uh, from Gucci or, uh, or you share some of uh, your CDs with one of your friends uh, by burning it for them or whether you have uh, recorded uh, something from... Uh, TV and have shown it in uh, a group of people. Or you ride a car without, without the seat belt or a bike with no hands on the steering bar. I mean. Exactly, but that's really a different type of legislation. But the point yeah. is still that y- you have a huge amount of people already criminalized. What SOPA and PIPA would do is it would potentially criminalize more than 50% of the population online. No one would be able to have any content that would not in some way, shape or form, uh, infringe on someone's copyright. Uh, whether it's a, 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 a remix of uh, the Der Untergang with the, the, the Hitler thing, or um, the use of, uh, of a Hello, Hello Kitty um, drawing, 
everyone would be doing something that could be considered an infringement. So the fact that this attack on, say, free speech or free communication, free virtual communication in this case, uh, using the memes and the cardinals and the bits and pieces of data out there of this information stream and reusing them in our own way. Uh, if we say that this battle, this round, has been won, I mean, then we can actually start looking at it as a great leap forward in the fact that now people are aware that unless we act out and we practice that freedom of information and sharing culture, uh, unless we practice it and do it more, and do it vigilantly, it's gone. Well, the the, the, the main problem with this is, is a it's really a cultural one, right? Because we have legislation that is so out of date and has been pushed into a, an area where it's not even realistic anymore. Um, if it's if you have copyright for a lifetime plus seventy five years, that means that if anyone is even using phrasing from those texts, you could be uh, considered a copyright infringer, right? So if you are saying things, if, if you're using a phrase like uh, "catcher in the rye," I would right? never. No, but if you do that, or if uh, um, all you need is love, fundamentally that is part of a copyright. So you could actually be prosecuted for copyright infringement. What? Same procedure as last year? No. Exactly. Uh, well, I think that's actually outside of copyright. I think that's in uh, common uh, in public domain now. Um, no, it is. It, but I've been saying it for so. years. Uh, but the, that's really what, what it's all about. It's the fact that, that this is such a huge strike against the, the remix culture that um, if, it, if it had been passed, now it's not going to, um, it would basically criminalize everyone online and, and it would make the existing infrastructure uh, responsible for it. So it would actually make services like, say, Mega Upload or um, uh, YouTube or Facebook responsible for the content in their services. Uh -huh. <laughs> you could say that, that this is a warning sign that it might actually wake up a lot of people to focus on finding alternatives, finding more decentralized alternatives to these existing uh, services. There is, of course, one other alternative. Since there is so much excellent uh, information freely available out there, and to my mind, I mean, any, any sort of interface that you've chosen for yourself with information stream, be that television, online media, you name it, as long as uh, books, films, I don't care. Uh, as long as you're inter interacting, uh, engaging somehow with mass-produced media, you have your own set of your own your own way of uh, engaging with that. And the, what this has also shown, at least me anyway, is that legally you, you can't be sure of, of any connection uh, that you have, any sort of system you set up. But things can change that fast. What we can do, however, is find ways to shift our useful uh, media stream toward direct contact, which we initiate, we control, which we can use. Spend more time talking to each other online, sh rather than being totally dependent on sharing bits and pieces from whatever else and whomever else out there. Yeah, but that, that's really because we are still waiting for the technology to catch up. Um, the, the, the point of all this is that no one has been very focused or open about taking uh, these discussions into the, in, in, into the, the, the public eye and, and actually having a sane debate about it. Because this all comes down to how can we create a new social contract? How can we reinvent these old systems when we have this technology? And, and, and that's where we should start, right? Because the internet have made information so abundant and creativity so abundant that working on an old supply and demand model is, is not possible because you cannot price and value uh, 
information or immaterial rights in the same way in, in a technology where you can instantly create as many copies and spread it globally uh, in the blink of an eye. It, it's, it's, it's just stupid right. to keep working like that and, and, and trying to enforce this artificial scarcity on information and creativity. It's just going to destroy everything. It's going to, it's going to destroy the establishment. It's not going to destroy the internet and the human creativity because it will just go underground and figure out new ways. That's why I say that, that now people will start opening up to alternative ways of sharing information and decentralizing their own uh, information streams. They will be starting to use things like uh, torrent technologies. Uh, they will start using things like uh, real-life drops, like, like dead drop. And, and we were talking about the coming development of things like the live drop, where you're actually where you have decentralized um, access to name services. Uh -huh. well, you will basically have some sort of decentralized uh, name service, like a DNS, but where you have or get a copy of it every day by some sort of decentralized sharing system like Torrent. Um, so everyone will know what I, uh, uh, identity and, and IP uh, holds what type of data. So you will be able to browse to, say... Um, uh, pellet.dk already knowing everything about your IP or your MAC address or whatever so if your laptop is online somewhere you would be able to browse directly to the hosted material that is only hosted when your machine is on yeah stop and, and, and retrace you, you hit too much around and switch topics uh, in between I guess we covered most of the, the SOAP and PIPA stuff and you well, this is that part of the rant beautifully. So the point about uh, this is that they want to censor the internet by closing the name server, right? They want to remove the names of services that are breaching these things, right? So basically, they would take away uh, Google.com if Google was infringing on 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 these laws, right? Um, but you would still be able to go to the Google website just not on the name. You would have to go there on the IP address. Uh -huh. And everyone would still be able to do that. And actually, you could easily add uh, the name in your local host file. So when you write it in your browser, it's just going to be your own computer telling you what IP you have to go to. Uh -huh. Instead of you going to a domain server that tells you, well, this is where you find Google you would already know where to find Google. It and would, it's it the would, same it's, thing. It would, so it would just add one layer of you know, programming that you would have to do rather than the software does for you, and that would demonstrate the absurdity of trying to uh, This would be equivalent to, to, to calling your local um, uh, telephone company and asking them for the phone number to someone that you know. Right? It's equivalent to that. It's just then... Uh, legislation would make it impossible for you to call and ask for, say, the telephone number of Pellet, mm -hmm. right? But if I already know the number to Pellet, or if I know someone that knows the number to Pellet, then I would just be able to call them instead. Exactly. So if this happened, and if uh, the patch for the first implementation of, the, of these laws would be as easy as that, it would, of course, uh, be a tremendous boost to peer-to-peer -peer culture. The, it, it, I think it already is because this will just boost the peer-to-peer -peer mentality and the, and the decentralized way of thinking. So people will start thinking, okay, how can we create a domain service, right, a, a, a name server service in a non-hierarchical uh, way? And I think that this will eventually go into the, the, the torrent uh technology and it will become a <laughs> system where you can't really take it down. It will become so decentralized that the top domain service will be uh, decommissioned. Mm. But, and but, since but, we are all, well, since we are all switching to uh, IPv6, then the number of IPs available will be staggering. So it will be very easy to have this new service running in a totally new system 
where you do not need to call uh, on a top domain server telling you where to find the specific website. Exactly. The interesting thing is, I mean, go, going with uh, Douglas Rushkoff and his insistent plea to please not let, let it not be a generation until we can program to some extent ourselves. Um, what you just said would be incomprehensible at some level to, to non nurse, but it, it's really that simple, and everyone couldn't would figure it out if they'd had to, and then they would would know that you'd have to make a conscious effort and an active pitch, really, into uh, the information stream to get what you want out of it. And as such, it would be, I think, it could be a great game changer, whether or not it can have partly that effect, even when the legislation is not, not, even, not passed this time around, well, we remains, already remains have, to be seen, and that'll be interesting. We already have the problems with a lot of users on YouTube that is doing some sort of remixing, um, even within what is termed fair use, right? Say they are creating a uh, mini documentary and they're using a few clips from some source, uh, which is actually allowed, uh -huh. um, especially if you're doing some sort of reviewing or referencing to that uh, content. Then it's allowed to do that with clips of less than two minutes, I think, uh, without asking permission. But even stuff like that is getting removed, right? It's getting uh, removed by uh, very strict uh, rules of, uh, um, of, shutting, of shutting down and... and, and well, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's the fact that I like to call, you know, the human AI. Um, whomever you know, files, uh, it's, it's like humans behaving like algorithms. Whoever files a request saying, like that, this, I mean, usually, from my, my understanding of it, uh, that means that YouTube sends out okay a, a warning, two or three depending on, on how bad the infringement is, and then they just shut down the the account. If not, I mean it, it's again uh, an ex example of assuming that people are guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, you know, and 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 this is really about the fact that more and more people are getting pretty good bandwidth, and it's becoming easier and easier to get access to um, what would be called uh, unlimited. Uh, unlimited hosting um, in regards to uh, bandwidth. So the fact that, that YouTube has limits on what content can be on um, the, the amount of minutes that can be hosted, um, all these limitations is, is eventually going to make people want to shift to some sort of alternative hosting. Right, but isn't it a bit of an example of, if you compare YouTube and Skype, since I mean, we are, we're using both services, um, couldn't you argue that it's a bit of an example of two different uh, ways and approaches towards uh, being the one product uh, or the one competitor in, in that field or you know, the one where the critical mass has been achieved? I mean, it's not, I'm not saying that uh, Skype does uh, nothing wrong and, and can't be improved upon, it's just that uh, you know, it has remained focused around facilitating uh, their users and then charging for all the extra services. But but uh, simple, easy core, core functions are there and, and they are not messed with. Whereas YouTube, ever since its inception and much more recently, uh, continuously messes up uh, its interface and, uh, and sort of badges its users. Well, it's, it's mainly about the the... the, the different types of service and, and, and about the fact that they close down uh, people's um, YouTube channels if there is a, um, any, any sort of uh, doubt whether or not they're infringing on anyone's copyright. The, the point is that more and more will be forced to move away from things like YouTube. And the more people that have something interesting to say chooses alternatives. Uh, and there, there is already some really good alternatives out there. Let's, you can let's, easily let's 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 list them. Let's hear. Well, you can easily host your own material. Let's say you've made a documentary. You can easily host that on uh, um, alternative torrent sites uh, and pretty well serviced sites. Mm -hmm. um, so you would not be depending on YouTube's service or bandwidth. 
allocation. You would have full control yourself, and you would be the one hosting the uh, the seed. So, um, these organizations are growing, and they've been considered mainly a criminal aspect of uh, the internet. But the technology that they are presenting is the future of uh, of distribution. And and that's not something that you can discuss whether or not it's being used for criminal uh, sharing. That that's another matter, and it's 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 really a a weird way of holding back uh, novel technology. Well, but that has to be because they know that novel technology leads to novel philosophy. Right? Yes and no. It's more that. It it will be impossible to police uh, and control a decentralized system, uh, and that wouldn't be a novel philosophy. I think it would. Yeah, but uh, I don't think that uh, that it comes down to to, to anything as uh, fundamental as, as philosophy. It's more about the lack of control mm-hmm. and and the fact that they can't put a price tag on it then anymore. Well, yeah, that is the measure of control, isn't it? Indeed, and and but but these projects are growing, and they they will be the future of the internet. It's just how fast we will uh, move into that way of doing things instead of uh, the classical one page fits all. And the funny thing is, because I mean, I, I we come across this question a couple of times in our dialogues, and me too, many times others. Um, and you know when it will happen. It will happen exactly when we, or rather you, watching this, choose to do so. I mean, the service is already there. It, it's The question cannot be answered, uh, as you phrased it, because the whole humanity cannot answer at once, but it will happen exactly when you choose to do so. Or in this case, me, since I just found out. Well, it's it's because when it comes to technology and the development of te- technologies, uh, there's always going to be some new fringe technology out there that's going to change the whole game. And it's a matter of how fast we transition from the early adopters into uh, the mass market. So tell me then about this live drop you mentioned earlier. Well, live drop is really just... Um, a terminology that that I put on the next step of what is presented uh, presented in that video called a death drop, where you basically have the uh, where, where you put a, a USB into the public, where people can then access the data and put uh, data there for someone else. Uh-huh. It's it's a um, it's a physical version of how we used to send mail to each other in the early days of the internet. Right. So, so, or it's the equivalent to what would be called a dead drop in a in a spy novel, right? But it, it's it's. I mean, it's very very easy to envision. It, it would just mean that if and when we need to have a decentralized internet, uh, when people realize that there needs to be hard copy of data, not hard copy in that regard. But I mean, it needs to be secured and uh, shared from many nodes. Uh, because storage space and storage capability has become so unbelievably ridiculously cheap, every you know uh, Wi-Fi transmitter will have its own storage space, and 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 there will be a cache of, of data that you can only access there. I mean, that's well, the core to, to notion just, of it. To just touch upon the whole topic of the alternative web, because this is very close to becoming a reality. In the early days, when people were joining these early uh, email systems and messaging systems, you would actually uh, physically call a bulletin board system, and they would answer your phone, right? Mm -hmm. And you would send data and put it there, and you would put the address of the person that you would want to get that packet, right? And that packet would then be shared and only when it reached the person that needed it 
they would be able to open it. So it would actually pass through many hands. Uh -huh. um, this was uh, called Fido Mail, and, and, and you had uh, point uh, IDs so people would know who you were and what packets you managed and, what, uh, and, and stuff like that. But the point is, this technology is going to be revived because with the, with the degree of um, uh, encryption that we have today, and with all these services, like um, we have this uh, uh, in, in the online gaming community, we have these security key services where you're basically getting some uh, a unique key generator. Uh, you can get it as an app to your iPhone, to an app uh, for your smartphone, or you can get it as a physical key that you can buy. So with these encryption options, then it will be possible for a lot of what you would call normal or basic mail or messaging or communication to actually be shared on all machines. So they would potentially be decentralized in a stream like in the torrent network where everyone is getting everyone's mail. Mm -hmm. But you have no chance of actually opening the mails because you would need to know the exact recipient and you would need to have the actual keys to open it. But you're not interested in that because you just get this yarn with all the data on, <laughs> on the thread. Mm -hmm. And you have to know exactly where on the thread you need to look in order to get your mail. So you starting to try and, and, and find someone else's data is almost impossible unless you have the same credentials and and, and the same uh, information that they do. And if you can send messages like that, then you would not need a centralized system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to distribute your mails. And the privacy, privacy concerns surrounding something like this, well, would likely be trivial because uh, no one knows what the internet is, <laughs> expects there to be any real privacy anymore the way it's run. And, and again, as long as, as it's as, lo as long as the system was encrypted to a degree that made it at least feel safe, so if, if say my mail that I send to you is encrypted with say 128 bit keys and we know that you have your key information so it would be almost impossible for anyone to look into that email then it's not really a security breach that everyone in the whole world just got that mail. Because it's going to be nonsense to them. Well, wouldn't it make sense, I mean, once you devise an encryp encryption system capable of doing that with some weird devilish algorithmic trickery, wouldn't it be sensible then for the centralization of decentralizing impulse to tie that directly to the new currency. Mm, I, I, don't, I don't know whether or not the, the, the new currency will be a similar system, but it, they will all be of that nature. So to take a step forward, we need to take a step back. Mm -hmm. And I know that personally, everyone would already be able to hack my computer. Many people don't re realize how easy it is to, to break into someone's computer and actually get your data. It, 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 is, it is so lowbrow, it's so easy to, to <laughs> intentionally get data when you want it. So if, if, if they have uh, some sort of doubts because all the mails to all their recipients is sent to everyone in the world. Um, if that's something that worries them, they should start worrying more about whether they have uh, secured their own home oh. for any sort of intrusion, because that type of uh, hacking or infringing or breaking security is going to be much more uh, relevant than whether or not they can break your uh, encryption. Because breaking encryption is, is very, very difficult, especially if you use 
key generation and timed and specific key generators like uh, the ones you use. Exactly. In yeah, I mean, the, funny enough, in, in, here in Denmark, I mean, government's taken one huge step in, in that direction uh, by introducing the NEM ID or ECID ID uh, and insisting all citizens use it. Yeah, and, and, and even that is, is actually extremely easy to break mm -hmm. because you would only need some sort of keystroke thing uh, up and running and, and, and you would easily be able to take that and then you would just need to have some sort of a copy of the person's little uh, ID card. These things about personal securities, you cannot get something as secure as uh, highly encrypted uh, messages, sure. and it is, and and they, uh, capacity-wise, they won't, they won't take up much storage. Emails ha is not that uh, heavy when it comes to content. Mm, no, but as the recent article you linked me earlier tells us, uh, they're fading out because they simply, the way they use now, it takes too long. I mean, it's not fast enough. Yeah, exactly. So, so we are looking at a future where the technologies are going to be more and more distributed and decentralized and more focused on direct connection like you and I are now on Skype. Yeah, I mean, we, we try to take one step in that direction so on, on the philosophical level, uh, level, what we call the, the open source idea protection, right? Just get it out there. Well, the, the same would be relevant with the... We were we were trying out that um, Pamela software where you were able to uh, record streams and and, um, and, and messages uh, on Skype. Something like that will be the future because if you are so suddenly um, not um, dependent on, say, Google Mail or some other uh, messaging system, but you can actually just receive the messages yourself uh -huh. so you are uh, you will have a machine that's on or off line um, whenever and it will be able to decide whether or not it receives a message from the specific people I was talking to Miles a little bit about this about uh, credentials and, and status and mm, what people to receive what type of messages or data from whether or not you are available or invisible online to certain people. It would be a lot easier when these technologies start developing. So I could actually leave you a video message on your machine if your machine is online and able to see that I'm calling you. It, it, it will be more and more self-hosting. People will have their own machines hosting everything they need. Because they can. Yeah, and because it's it's it has its its drawbacks, of course, but it it gives you your own control. That means you're not dependent on some big hosting company uh, that you need to pay for those services. You just need to host. Uh, you, you you just need to pay for your internet connection, and then everything else is basically up to you. Again, back to the program or be programmed. Um, and then, then we'll probably see the, the widespread use of services. I would imagine, like like Flatter, uh, that Miles linked me, where you, I mean, you pay a monthly subscription or whatever, which is like your your good faith or your your, your karma thing. And then, when you're once you're part of that system, you whenever you like something, that person gets a slice of the pie you pay into. Yeah, and, and, and when it comes to social currencies, this is really, uh, again, a, a bit off topic. The, the point I'm trying to make is that you would not be buying a web hosting service like we have for Seoul United. You would host it yourself. Oh. And you would even have mirrors of the entire site spread into the distributed net to the people that are actually reading your site. Uh -huh. Because it would make no sense uh, to, to use a centralized system because that makes it sensitive. That means that it can break down, or um, the host can go bankrupt, or uh, the servers can burn, or whatever. And since technology-wise, the content on our entire site is actually not that heavy, and the traffic is not that heavy, it makes no sense to have it in a, 
in a hosted service. Exactly. It and would the, be the, the interesting point then would, would be, I mean, what, why did Facebook initially become as big as that compared to previous services? Um, the exclusivity factor, I mean, that you could create your own social internet and, uh, and you know, have a functional virtual avatar there. And it would be the same sort of thing. I mean, you'd have your side, your entire data set um, shared amongst and hosted amongst everyone who had a stake in you. I mean, whatever that be, everyone, everyone who would have access to, wanted to have access to that data at any, any one point would then naturally share it uh, with everyone else as well, be a host of that. Uh, and already, I, think, already, I mean, that there we are reinvested in each other. Well, the, the main point comes down to technology, and this is why the more people get information about how these technologies actually work, the easier this transition will be. Because you have already looked at the data content on our entire web host, right? It's very, very low. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you consider how, I, I think it's what, is it 500 or 600 me megabytes of entire data? But, that, but that, that's the text and we, we do, I mean, all the videos are on YouTube, yeah? Of course the videos are on YouTube, so you would have to, to, to add that content too. But if you then said that, let's say on a full scale with everything, right, and our site is not that small, uh, it would be, a, the content would be something like four or eight gigabytes. And that's a USB key. And the technologies are now, a, they're developing so fast that being able to actually browse into a USB key as if it was a website is very cheap. Plugging that USB key uh, into your uh, router um, or into someone else's computer, it, it's just, it makes no sense that that data needs to be at someone's hosting service where they pay a monthly fee. It, it makes no sense mm -hmm. because having that data in your own hands, posted on your own machine or streamed into a mm, decentralized distributed net not like a torrent net, that is going to make so much more sense because that would mean that everyone could easily host 10, 20, 100 websites for everyone within their vicinity. And the redundancy would, would arise from the fact that it would become the whole uh, degrees of separation. So all the websites would go into this decentralized cloud instead. Mm -hmm. And the only question is how would it then update with new data and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure that the technology is getting there. Mm -hmm. I showed you the, the Fion project, mm -hmm. which is about uh, streaming video uh, using distributed net, yeah. and and but, but I mean the point you need to make this this point in dialogue. You, we've already seen uh, people preparing themselves for this. Uh, in that, when the social internet became possible, uh, that what people are training towards. I mean, in, in general usage. I mean, looking at how how much time people spend on Facebook and YouTube compared to whatever else they do on the internet, um, and whatever level of information, what kind of information you you want to get out with what you want to share. I mean, the bulk of it is now shared socially. And, you know, since that has happened voluntarily within what, what's supposedly an un, relatively uncensored internet, uh, but but centralized, well, the, the natural tendency would be already be there for people to say, yeah, sure, I mean, you, you have to know people who know people to get at their data. Uh, but that's not difficult. But but the, and then you know the da da data packets, the static knowledge that coincide with the dynamic knowledge that is the real life person, and that dynamic is built up, and people will know to to have to contact people who know people who know. Well, this is all about uh, how to transition into um, a decentralized uh, system, and it's. Um, it's a development that, that seems to take longer than mm, I think most geeks had expected. And it's basically because of uh, a lot of legislative uh, things standing in the way. Right. 
I won't I won't argue that though though there's a uh, you know there's cultural lag also. Well, but it's because every time someone creates something like Kassar or Skype or uh, the Nutella clients or uh, Direct Connect or Torrent Files or whatever it might be, every time someone is creating a distribution system or a service that can be used for something criminal, then the service becomes criminal, which is ridiculous because... They do not decide what the technology is used for. And then people can say, well, but your intention is to, to, to distribute that type of content. No, my intention is to distribute content. I don't decide what's on it. Exactly. And, then, and if you're going to argue like that, then the idea of a non-criminal weapons manufacturer would seem kind of ridiculous, wouldn't it? Exactly. That's that's maybe the the, the the best argument I've ever heard, right? 